Hey guys, David here at the Crystal Act Company again, and uh, I wanted to take the opportunity today to talk to you all about application of water-based products. Um, everyone is experiencing the humidity, the heat, and everything, and so there's some tips and tricks I want to pass on to you when using a water-based product that's going to make the application a lot easier. So whether you're going over stained, raw wood, painted, pre-finished, whatever, you've got to stick to the basics. Number one, if you're going over any, any kind of project, you want to prep. Whether it's with raw wood, you want to sand and perhaps do a, um, a sanding sealer or, or a, uh, you know, in order to help bind the pores and grains to avoid that grain raise. Uh, or a, for example, a pre-painted, uh, pre-finished piece that's been done for years. You want to clean, uh, scuff, and, and clean again before you prime and you go on to your top coats and paints and things like that. So lots of processes out there. But the number one thing we see this, type of, this time of year, I should say, is uh, folks putting our water-based, our water-based finishes or any water-based finish on too thick. If you put it on too thick, the humidity and temperature is really going to affect it. It's going to affect the dry time, the cure times, the, uh, the time that it takes before you can apply another coat. So I want to show you really quick how easy it is to put on a, a, a coat and even during the inclement weather it's still possible to get that perfect finish. Now you want to choose a quality water-based finish, not because it's, you know, it's classified as a water-based finish. Not all products are created equal. Some are, uh, use much better polymers, resins, things like that um, uh, to create that formula to give you that finish. So one of the first tips that I learned in order to get a perfect flawless top coat finish like you see on these these cabinets is it's really simple is dip and drip don't don't dip your uh, your brush or your applicator in and start wiping it over the side of the the can to, to drag off the excess there's really no excess on there so you don't have to worry about that but the thing that when when you wipe it across the can like that, you're forcing air into your brush, whether it's a tack, tack on brush or a bristle brush, a foam brush, a rag, whatever. If you're wiping it, you're forcing air into it. And with water, you're going to transfer those bubbles over to uh, uh, the project that you're working on. So I have a couple of pieces here that I had stained previously, and I just wanted to put a, a coat on. Now, I've, I've been pretty liberal here with the amount of product. Sometimes I will prime my brush, especially when using a foam brush. Don't, you know, leave it dripping wet or anything like that. Dampen it, wet it, then shake out the excess, whatever you need to do. But if you prime your brush, you don't soak up as much product in your brush as you're applying it. So dip, drip, and then just thin light coats when using a water-based finish. The purpose is not to load up and try to build a coat with the finish itself by applying too much product. So you can see I'm putting this on vertically and the amount of product that I'm putting on is not thick enough to run or drip or sag. Now this will work with any of our finishes. Um, I'm using our extreme protection polyurethane, which is a true water-based polyurethane, non-yellowing, self-leveling, as you can see. But you want to put it on quickly, nice, even, long, you know, thin coats. And you can see there's a few bubbles and things like that in there. I missed a little spot. But once you apply that thin, wet film, you want to just leave it alone. Now, with crystal Crystallite Company products, all this will level out, all the lines they have created and everything else will level out, and all of those bubbles will pop. But if I've got that too thick, then it's going to take forever to dry. We recommend two to four hours between coats. 
really hot and humid, I may do this before I go to bed tonight and just let it set overnight. I may let it go 8, 10 hours if it's really humid. And so keep that in mind. Hot temperatures, you may want to try some of our uh, uh, retarder reducer. Uh, just a small amount of the retarder reducer in, in the container or in your uh, top coat and it's going to slow it down and give that product time to self level out. So you can already see it's perfectly clear all those bubbles everything all the lines and everything are already coming out of it. So even like I said this is top coated with the satin uh, this has a, a semi gloss on it so um, Again, I'll go through it one more time. Dip, drip, nice even thin coats. You're not gonna be running, you're not gonna be sagging. And when you use a specialty coating, a quality coating that's, that's uh, you know, put together uh, to last, I guess you could say, um, the solids content of that these products are a lot higher than what you would typically find in the box store. For example, our extreme protection polyurethane is around 53 to 55% solids. So what that means is on your dry coat, when the coat is actually dry, your build is gonna be a lot higher at 50, 55% solids. Your typical box store brand of top coat or paint will have, especially top coats, will have around 17 to 20% solids. So one coat of a specialty coating like Extreme Protection is going to be two to three coats of your, of your typical box store brand. So you saw how I did that nice thin coats. I'm not going back and forth trying to get all the bubbles, lines, everything else out of it. And everything's just going to fade and you know flow into each other and it's all going to self-level out and look really nice. So. I hope these quick tips have helped you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at the Crystal Act Company, 423-727-6425. You can go to our website, crystalact.info, and please find us on Facebook and like our Facebook page. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great weekend.